Section 35 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 18 Jarring Cherries and Preserves, etc. To Jar Cherries, Lady North's Way. Take twelve pounds of cherries, stone them, put them in your preserving pan with three pounds of double refined sugar and a quart of water. Then set them on the fire till they are scalding hot. Take them off a little while and set them on the fire again. Boil them till they are tender. Then sprinkle them with half a pound of double refined sugar pounded and skim them clean. Put them all together in a china bowl. Let them stand in the syrup three days. Drain them through a sieve and take them out one by one with the holes downwards on a wicker sieve then set them in a stove to dry and as they dry turn them upon clean sieves when they are dry enough put a clean white sheet of paper in a preserving pan then put all the cherries in with another clean white sheet of paper on the top of them cover them close with a cloth and set them over a cool fire till they sweat Take them off the fire, then let them stand till they are cold, and put them in boxes or jars to keep. To dry cherries. To four pounds of cherries, put one pound of sugar, and just put as much water to the sugar as will wet it. When it is melted, make it boil. Stone your cherries, put them in, and make them boil. Skim them two or three times, take them off, and let them stand in the syrup two or three days then boil your syrup and put to them again but do not boil your cherries any more let them stand three or four days longer then take them out lay them in sieves to dry and lay them in the sun or in a slow oven to dry when dry lay them in rows in papers and sew a row of cherries and a row of white paper in boxes to preserve cherries with the leaves and stalks green first dip the stalks and leaves in the best vinegar boiling hot stick the sprig upright in a sieve till they are dry in the meantime boil some double refined sugar to syrup and dip the cherries stalks and leaves in the syrup and just let them scald lay them on a sieve and boil the sugar to a candy height then dip the cherries, stalks, leaves, and all. Then stick the branches in sieves and dry them as you do other sweetmeats. They look very pretty at candlelight in a dessert. To make orange marmalade. Take the clearest Seville oranges and cut them in two. Take out all the pulp and juice into a pan and pick all the skins and seeds out. Boil the rinds in hard water till they are very tender, and change the water three times while they are boiling, and then pound them in a mortar, and put in the juice and pulp. Put them in a preserving pan with double their weight of loaf sugar. Set it over a slow fire, boil it gently forty minutes, put it into pots. Cover it with brandy paper, and tie it down close to make white marmalade pare and core the quinces as fast as you can then take to a pound of quinces being cut in pieces less than half quarters three quarters of a pound of double refined sugar beat small then throw half the sugar on the raw quinces set it on a slow fire till the sugar is melted and the quinces tender then put in the rest of the sugar and boil it up as fast as you can. When it is almost enough, put in some jelly and boil it apace. Then put it up, and when it is quite cold, cover it with white paper. To make red marmalade. Take full ripe quinces, pare and cut them in quarters, and core them. Put them in a saucepan, cover them with the parings. Fill the saucepan nearly full of spring water cover it close and stew them gently till they are quite soft and a deep pink colour 
then pick out the quince from the parings and beat them to a pulp in a mortar take their weight in loaf sugar put in as much of the water they were boiled in as will dissolve it and boil and skim it well put in your quinces and boil them gently three quarters of an hour keep stirring them all the time or it will stick to the pan and burn put it into flat pots and when cold tie it down close to preserve oranges whole take the best bermudas or seville oranges you can get and pare them with a penknife very thin and lay your oranges in water three or four days shifting them every day then put them in a kettle with fair water and put a board on them to keep them down in the water and have a skillet on the fire with water that may be ready to supply the kettle with boiling water as it wastes it must be filled up three or four times while the oranges are doing for they will take up seven or eight hours boiling they must be boiled till a white straw will run through them then take them out and scoop the seeds out of them very carefully by making a little hole in the top and weigh them to every pound of oranges put a pound and three quarters of double refined sugar beat well and sifted through a clean lawn sieve fill your oranges with sugar and strew some on them let them lie a little while and make your jelly thus take two dozen of pippins or john apples and slice them into water and when they are boiled tender strain the liquor from the pulp and to every pound of oranges you must have a pint and a half of this liquor and put to it three quarters of the sugar you left in filling the oranges set it on the fire and let it boil skim it well and put it in a clean earthen pan till it is cold then put it in your skillet put in your oranges with a small bodkin job your oranges as they are boiling to let the syrup into them strew on the rest of your sugar whilst they are boiling and when they look clear take them up and put them into your glasses put one in a glass just fit for them and boil the syrup till it is almost a jelly then fill up your glasses when they are cold paper them up and keep them in a dry place or thus cut a hole out of the stalk end of your orange as big as a sixpence scoop out all the pulp very clean tie them singly in muslin and lay them two days in spring water change the water twice a day and boil them in the muslin till tender be careful you keep them covered with water weigh the oranges before you scoop them to every pound add two pounds of double refined sugar and a pint of water boil the sugar and water with the orange juice to a syrup skim it well let it stand till it is cold take the oranges out of the muslin and put them in and boil them till they are quite clear and put them by till cold then pare and core some green pippins and boil them in water till it is very strong of the pippin do not stir them put them down gently with the back of a spoon and strain the liquor through a jelly bag till it is clear put to every pint of liquor a pound of double refined sugar and the juice of a lemon strained as clear as you can boil it to a strong jelly drain the oranges out of your syrup and put them in glass or white stone jars of the size of the orange and pour the jelly on them cover them with brandy papers and tie them over with a bladder you may do lemons in the same manner quinces whole take your quinces and pare them cut them in quarters or leave them whole which you please put them into a saucepan and cover them with hard water lay your parings over them to keep them under water cover your saucepan close that no steam can come out set them over a slow fire till they are soft and a fine pink colour then let them stand till cold make a syrup of double refined sugar with as much water as will wet it boil and skim it well put in your quinces 
let them boil ten minutes take them off and let them stand three hours then boil them till the syrup is thick and the quinces clear then put them in deep jars and when cold put brandy paper over them and tie them down close to make conserve of red roses or any other flowers take rosebuds or any other flowers and pick them cut off the white part from the red and put the red flowers and sift them through a sieve to take out the seeds then weigh them and to every pound of flowers take two pounds and a half of loaf sugar beat the flowers pretty fine in a stone mortar then by degrees put the sugar to them and beat it very well till it is well incorporated together then put it into gallipots tie it over with paper over that a leather and it will keep seven years to make conserve of hips gather hips before they grow soft cut off the heads and stalks slit them in halves take out all the seeds and white that is in them very clean then put them into an earthen pan and stir them every day or they will grow mouldy let them stand till they are soft enough to rub them through a coarse hair sieve as the pulp comes take it off the sieve they are a dry berry and will require pains to rub them through then add its weight in sugar mix them well together without boiling and keep it in deep galley pots for use to make syrup of roses infuse three pounds of damask rose leaves in a gallon of warm water in a well glazed earthen pot with a narrow mouth for eight hours which stop so close that none of the virtue may exhale when they have infused so long heat the water again squeeze them out and put in three pounds more of rose leaves to infuse for eight hours more then press them out very hard then to every quart of this infusion add four pounds of fine sugar and boil it to a syrup to make syrup of citron pare and slice your citrons thin lay them in a basin with layers of fine sugar the next day pour off the liquor into a glass skim it and clarify it over a gentle fire to make syrup of clove gilly flowers clip your gilly flowers sprinkle them with fair water put them into an earthen pot stop it up very close set it in a kettle of water and let it boil for two hours then strain out the juice put a pound and a half of sugar to a pint of juice put it into a skillet set it on the fire keep it stirring till the sugar is all melted do not let it boil then set it by to cool and put it into bottles to make syrup of peach blossoms infuse peach blossoms in hot water as much as will handsomely cover them let them stand in balneo or in sand for twenty-four hours covered close then strain out the flowers from the liquor and put in fresh flowers let them stand to infuse as before then strain them out and to the liquor put fresh peach blossoms the third time and if you please a fourth time then to every pound of your infusion add two pounds of double refined sugar and setting it in sand or balneo make a syrup which keep for use to make syrup of quinces great quinces pass their pulp through a cloth to extract the juice set their juices in the sun to settle or before the fire and by that means clarify it for every four ounces of this juice take a pound of sugar boiled brown if the putting in the juice of the quinces should check the boiling of the sugar too much give the syrup some boiling till it becomes pearled then take it off the fire and when cold put it into the bottles to preserve apricots take your apricots stone and pare them thin and take their weight in double refined sugar beaten and sifted 
put your apricots in a silver cup or tankard cover them over with sugar and let them stand so all night the next day put them in a preserving pan set them on a gentle fire and let them simmer a little while then let them boil till tender and clear taking them off sometimes to turn and skim keep them under the liquor as they are doing and with a small clean bodkin or great needle job them that the syrup may penetrate into them when they are enough take them up and put them in glasses boil and skim your syrup and when it is cold put it on your apricots put brandy paper over and tie them close to preserve damsons whole you must take some damsons and cut them in pieces put them in a skillet over the fire with as much water as will cover them when they are boiled and the liquor pretty strong strain it out add for every pound of the damsons wiped clean a pound of single refined sugar put the third part of your sugar into the liquor set it over the fire and when it simmers put in the damsons let them have one good boil and take them off for half an hour covered up close then set them on again and let them simmer over the fire after turning them then take them out and put them in a basin strew all the sugar that was left on them and pour the hot liquor over them cover them up and let them stand till next day then boil them up again till they are enough take them up and put them in pots boil the liquor till it jellies and pour it on them when it is almost cold so paper them up to candy any sort of flowers take the best treble refined sugar break it into lumps and dip it piece by piece into water put them into a vessel of silver and melt them over the fire when it just boils strain it and set it on the fire again then let it boil till it draws in hairs which you may perceive by holding up your spoon then put in the flowers and set them in cups or glasses when it is of a hard candy break it in lumps and lay it as high as you please dry it in a stove or in the sun and it will look like sugar candy to preserve gooseberries whole without stoning take the largest preserving gooseberries and pick off the black eye but not the stalk then set them over the fire in a pot of water to scold cover them very close but not boil or break and when they are tender take them up into cold water then take a pound and a half of double refined sugar to a pound of gooseberries and clarify the sugar with water a pint to a pound of sugar and when your syrup is cold put the gooseberries single in your preserving pan put the syrup to them and set them on a gentle fire let them boil but not too fast lest they break and when they have boiled and you perceive that the sugar has entered them take them off cover them with white paper and set them by till the next day then take them out of the syrup and boil the syrup till it begins to be ropey skim it and put it to them again then set them on a gentle fire and let them simmer gently till you perceive the syrup will rope then take them off set them by till they are cold cover them with paper then boil some gooseberries in fair water and when the liquor is strong enough strain it out let it stand to settle and to every pint take a pound of double refined sugar then make a jelly of it put the gooseberries in glasses when they are cold cover them with the jelly the next day paper them wet and then half dry the paper that goes in the inside it closes down better and then white paper over the glass set it in your stove or a dry place to preserve white walnuts first pare your walnuts till the white appears and nothing else you must be very careful in the doing of them that they do not turn black 
and as fast as you do them throw them into salt and water and let them lie till your sugar is ready take three pounds of good loaf sugar put it into your preserving pan set it over a charcoal fire and put as much water as will just wet the sugar let it boil then have ready ten or a dozen whites of eggs strained and beat up to a froth cover your sugar with the froth as it boils and skim it then boil it and skim it till it is as clear as crystal then throw in your walnuts just give them a boil till they are tender then take them out and lay them in a dish to cool when cool put them in your preserving pan and when the sugar is as warm as milk pour it over them when quite cold paper them down thus clear your sugar for all preserves apricots peaches gooseberries currants etc to preserve walnuts green wipe them very clean and lay them in strong salt and water twenty four hours then take them out and wipe them very clean have ready a skillet of water boiling throw them in let them boil a minute and take them out lay them on a coarse cloth and boil your sugar as above then just give your walnuts a scold in the sugar take them up and lay them to cool put them in your preserving pot and pour on your syrup as above to preserve the large green plums first dip the stalks and leaves in boiling vinegar when they are dry have your syrup ready and first give them a scold and very carefully with a pin take off the skin boil your sugar to a candy height and dip in your plums hang them by the stalk to dry and they will look finely transparent and by hanging that way to dry will have a clear drop at the top you must take great care to clear your sugar nicely to preserve peaches take the largest peaches you can get not over ripe rub off the lint with a cloth and run them down the seam with a pin skin deep cover them with french brandy tie a bladder over them and let them stand a week make a strong syrup and boil and skim it well take the peaches out of the brandy and put them in and boil them till they look clear then take them out put them in glasses mix the syrup with the brandy and when cold pour it over your peaches tie them close down with a bladder and leather over it to make quince cakes you must let a pint of the syrup of quinces with a quart or two of raspberries be boiled and clarified over a clear gentle fire taking care that it be well skimmed from time to time then add a pound and a half of sugar cause as much more to be brought to a candy height and poured in hot let the whole be continually stirred about till it is almost cold then spread it on plates and cut it out into cakes. End of section thirty five.